Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today is about insecurity. Now, in Ogun State, there are reports about a clash, you know, between herders and farmers in a particular village, Olokomeji, in Ogun State. And uh, the news reaching us that has been even confirmed by residents of Ogun State and um, as well as... Okay, um, we would actually come back in more detail to that conversation in uh, Ogun State. Um, let's talk now about elections, the Electoral Amendment Bill. Um, we know that both chambers um, have, you know, gone ahead to put in some amendments to the um, Electoral Act, and a particular one in contention is a section two, section fifty of that, you know, amendments bill, and they're basically saying that, you know, Nigerians can go ahead and vote electronically, but it will not be transmitted. The result of the election will not be transmitted electronically. Um, we have the Coalition for Electoral, um, God bless Uchubure, Coalition for Electoral Reforms, um, joining us this morning. Good morning, Mr. Uchubure. Um, can you hear us, Mr. Uchubure? If you can hear us, can you unmute your mic? I can hear you. If you can hear me, I'm Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. So we're basically talking about this situation where, you know, both chambers have inserted new provisions in this Electoral Act Amendment Bill saying people can vote electronically, but it will not be transmitted electronically. What message does that send you? They are not ready. Uh, to move the country's democracy forward. Uh, Dr. Ahmed Lawan and Honorable Femi Badja Biamila and most of the members of the House, the Ninth National Assembly, are saying to Nigerians, we are not ready to move forward and uh, we're just going to remain where we are. But Nigerians are going to let them know that we're not going to remain where we are. It's just, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's funny and it's even laughable that you can say you can vote electronically, but don't transmit the results electronically. What are you afraid of? Uh, so uh, that's, that's, that's it. Exactly, uh, the, Mr. Chiburi. What, what do you think they're uh, afraid of? They're afraid of the people's will. If they're so popular, if they believe that uh, they can go to the polls and talk to the people to vote. Uh, they should allow the, the, the results that are gotten from the poll to be transmitted uh, by INEC. <laughs> it's just, they're afraid of losing. That's it. This is a self-serving idea. And sadly, sadly, uh, the president is not with them on this. How do you know that? Yeah, because the president gave us his assurances. Uh, when he signed the Not Too Young to Run bill, he told us clearly that what he wants to do uh, is to bequeath a credible electoral legacy uh, for Nigeria. And it's, it's on record. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not just saying, I'm not making this up. I'm saying it, let us share this with everybody. President Muhammad Buhari does not support what the Dr. Ahmed Lawan and uh, Femi Bajabiamila, the uh, Honorable Femi Bajabiamila, the uh, right National Assembly is doing uh, on this electoral bill because the president wants to sign a bill that reflects the interest of the country that moves our elections forward. So oh. I'm saying it to them. I'm saying it to them now that they are not working with the president on this one. So um, would we, would we, would you be, you know, ready for another conversation if the president does go ahead to assent to this bill the way it is currently uh, structured? Uh, because the president will not assent to this bill the way it is at the moment because we will not allow it. Uh, because at the end of the day, so let, let's 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 be very clear. A lot of us that have been given our lives the last three years just to ensure that our elections are better. We, we, we can't go to sleep knowing well that everything we've worked for in the last two and a plus, two and plus years now, three years, we just go down the drain. What is the, what are the changes that we would have recorded? What progress would we have made? How do you say, look, we all are complaining that people are writing results. How can
can I see five in my polling unit? And when, when, when it gets to the final destination, I see 5,000. That is an aberration. We're not in, an, we're, we're not in the zoo. We're not, we're not animals. We are human beings. We can think. Democracy works when the people's vote count. So I don't, what are we afraid of? All right. So that I, I will come back to have this conversation, but I can tell you that from today till the day this bill is passed, we are giving assurances to Nigerians. And even we are telling the, 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 the Senate president and the Speaker of the House and all the principal members of the House, they will not have sleep. Let me, let me understand. Can, can, you, can you share with us? How you expect yeah, that no, this, share with us how you expect this will play out. Uh, the amendment, of course, says, you know, no electronic transmission of results. Uh, there's also, of course, plans for Loretta or not chair to be made in a commissioner in Delta State. Um, and you're saying that President Mohamed Ubuari will not assent to it. So does this look very much like we're going to get to 2023 without any new uh, electoral act that has been signed and put into law? Um, and do, how do you expect that you can tackle or continue to challenge this to ensure that these things are changed before it is signed? Or so, the first thing we're doing, so the first thing we're doing is this. Our, uh, the House resumes our, their job this week uh, from, from, from today. So we've lined up a series of activities that we will be uh, using to engage members of the House. And we're going to do it democratically. There's no violence to anything we're doing or anything against the law. So when I say that the president will not sign this, it doesn't mean that the president will not sign an electoral amendment act. What we're simply saying is this. It is, it is an alteration of this section 50 subsection 2, which states that now... The version that we have, that we all made contributions to in the harmonization stage and in the committee review session and the uh, public hearing session, says that INIC is empowered to transmit results in the way that they chose. Yes. Right? The forged one, which now, we are now also going to give uh, Dr. Ahmed Lawan and uh, the Honorable Speaker, Femi Badabi Amina, the benefit of the doubt. To say, well, you're accusing us, but we are not also supporting this other, this other document that is circulating. is a forged one. That's not what uh, we, we, we want to give to Nigeria. So we will give them that opportunity. Again, what the president will sign will be an electoral act that empowers INEC to be able to transmit results electronically so that there will be less bloodshed and violence in our elections. Yeah, but what I'm asking is how do you plan to stop this from going forward? If the president decides yeah. that he likes this one, because this, this is the same presidency that has nominated Loretta Onoche as INEC uh, a commissioner, even with all the little details that should make her not even, you know, a possible candidate for anything close to that. So how do you want or plan to prevent this from going forward? If the House says this is the one, this is not a forged one, this is the exact one that we're putting forward to the presidency, what do you, what's the plan to stop that from going forward and being assented to? Uh, we're going to continue to engage them the way that democracy permits. And, 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 and I need to say this. I need to say this. Uh, I laughed when you said the House will say this is the one. <laughs> the House is not there on its own volition. The House is there because Nigerians, young people like myself, and uh, people all across the country voted for them. We're going to institute a general recall process for almost all the members of the House if they chose that what they would do is to ignore the yearnings of Nigerians. This, look, this bill is not going to pay me. It's not going, it's not going to bring, it's going to serve our country. So we have a recall tool. We have simple disobedience tools that we're also going to employ. And like I said, 
this is not where, where I mean, we've been on this hill for the last three years, and we've done it working with the House. We've done it working with the Speaker's office, with the Deputy Senate President's office, the Senate uh, President's office, and, and, you know, and even the presidency. We believe in dialogue. We believe in engaging. What we're simply saying is this. Mr. President will not go back on his word that I will bequeath a credible electoral legacy for Nigerians. He promised us that. He can't deny it. It's on record. So if he goes ahead to say, I like this one, we're going to remind him that, sir, you cannot like this one because you gave us your word on another one. So the simple thing is this. They know that the president is not with them on this. I can tell you that for free. Okay. We are going to ensure that that house, the National Assembly that is the people's house, will see a lot of us this week. Okay, and we are going to do it civilly. Mm. Okay, Mr. Alchubiri, when we look at these you know, key modifications in the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, um, would you say, you know, based on what we've, what we've seen, would you say that this, you know, takes away the power of INEC to be a truly independent electoral body? And how do you expect INEC to react to this? Well, you see, one of the most important things is that um, why are we fixated on the electronic transmission of results? It's simply because... That is the bedrock upon which the final outcome of election uh, process is determined. A, a result at the end of the day, because we don't want the whole process to go down in flames anymore. That is not the only thing that we're angry at. The previous, the one that we all worked on, and we believed, and in fact, in partnership with INEC, because let me explain how this thing worked. The House what we're doing is we're repealing the 2010 Electoral Amendment Act as amended and reenacting a new act, 2020, now in 2021. What INEC and the civil society organizations and even the House agreed on is that there's too much influence of money in our politics. So we made recommendations that the net spend on a presidential campaign for presidency should not be more than 1 billion, 1.5 billion. My, my, my brother, my sister there, today, the, the version that they are likely going to pass has increased the net spend for presidential campaigns to 15, to 15 billion. So you are literally saying to the people that your political system is now money driven. And once money becomes the focus of any political system, service is out of the window. Mm. Number two, you put a clause, a provision, section 135 of the act that they want to pass that says that an election that does not meet the provisions of this act any elections conducted that does not meet the provisions of this act, but, now listen, but it is believed that the inconsistency does not substantially affect the outcome of the election, that the election can be deemed valid. So you are literally saying it's wuru to the answer. So, um, Mr. Alchubari, my question remains, how do you expect INEC to react? Do you expect them to take this line down or challenge this amendment? You see, I was, you see, you asked for, you say it, I was naming them so that Nigerians can understand. I was going there. INEC is, at the moment, still subject to the whims and caprices of the executive, sadly so. Sadly so. Now, INEC will not come out and fight the executive. That, that is important that we must understand. INEC is both, INEC is in the middle. INEC is dealing with Nigerians. INEC is also managing an executive that is responsible for their appointment and their work. Because INEC, one of the things we're also looking at that we recommended is financial autonomy for INEC. 
So if you ask me, how will INEC respond? INEC would not come out and say, oh, you know, INEC would only give advisory positions. That's what, they, that's what they would do. They would say, okay, well, for the purpose of making our work easy, we believe that, you know, uh, being able to do the things that the people want is important, uh, but let us come back to the drawing table and look. That's what INEC would do. INEC would not speak the way I'm speaking. No. All right, Mr. Otubori, um, I, I want us to, of course, so quickly also share the reasons why, yeah. um, you know, they seem to be blocking electronic transmission of uh, uh, results, the reasons the National Assembly is given for that, and what you think should be the response of Nigerians. If you remember, we're coming from a place where there was chaos over INEX servers and whether the servers were active or their batteries were down, you know, during the you know last elections, and whether they, you know, at, at, whether there was witchcraft around the servers at that time. We've we've come from that place. We've dealt with that. So what what are the reasons that they are currently given for not allowing electronic transfer of uh, results? And what do you think should be the response of Nigerians who seriously want that to be um, a part of the new act? So. We, we, we do not have a cap we, we do not have a, a, a principal problem of the workability of transmitting results. What we have is a perceived fear of security breach or capacity. So the lawmakers who will tell you, oh, let's not transmit results electronically because it can be hacked, or no, you are not dealing with the issue. If we are saying, oh no, if we transmit results electronically to be hacked, let us design firewalls that guarantee that our elections can remain, that we can transmit. And let me even say this, what we initially were even asking for is that just you see the way when we when we do when we watch the US elections and how the results come in and you can literally see the results from precinct. We of course uh, will try to reconnect with him this morning to continue that conversation. It's um, mostly all about the importance of having freer and fairer elections in 2023 and seeing what the Nigerian electoral process looks like, you know, going forward. Um, for too long now, you know, uh, you know, Nigerians have clamored and called for a, a, a better electoral process that, you know, gives Nigerians the ability to vote in the very, very best of candidates. And, of course, uh, a process that is almost, you know, seamless. Mm. Um, it, 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 it will be, and I feel, you know, from the reactions that I've seen, you know, to this, very, very heartbreaking that, you know, from the last elections when the president had said, oh, it was too early or it was too close to the elections and so they couldn't um, um, approve uh, an amendment at that time, eventually this will be what will be, uh, you know, approved or sent to. We'll, we'll figure it out. Exactly. And Ms. what Mr. Ultraboy, you know, was saying, basically trying to make comparison, what, when you, you know, take a look at elections in places like the U.S., you're even watching it on TV, seeing how the, you know, the results and how people are voting. You're, you're seeing that live. So really understandable why these questions must be asked. Um, Mr. Right. Chibur, are you there? I'm back. I'm back. I, I, I think I'm back. If you can hear me, yes, I think I'm back. Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. So I was saying that what INEC has tried to do is to take pictures of the final results that, that they sort of just show to everybody, and then they send it through the value chain of the results uh, collection process. Now, even if we're not doing manual, you know, transmission of the results from polling units and what have you, what INEC is able to do is to say, the final result from the polling unit, the final result from the polling unit have been taken. And, and let me say this, let me say this. Though INEC is doing that, the 2010 act that we're using to run our elections right now does not recognize that process in court. So it is not a legally backed process. What we are saying is make that process legally binding so that it is tenable in court as evidence. Look, let's be, we were all in this country. We saw what happened with uh, the Bielsa case. We saw what happened in Imo. We saw 
We've seen, look, are we not tired of just staying in one place? Was there, can you remember the Edo State elections and how that ran? Was there any electronic transfer of results for Edo State elections? So what happened was that there were pictures taken of the from, uh, is it from EC8 now? I, 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 uh, it's, I'm mobbling those, um, the numbers are jamming in my head and I'm trying to get it. So this is it. It's like, let me, let me get something now. So this is the form. Let's say this is the form, right? Yeah. Let's say this is the form. Now, at the, at, the, at the end of voting, every polling unit, what you find is P, uh, APC 300, PDP 200, YPP 300, whatever. At, that is what the polling officer, the PO, shows to everybody and signed by party agents, right? So we all look at that and say, this is what was gotten from this polling unit. Yes. What we are simply asking is, let this result, right, be transmitted electronically to INEX such that let's not wait until this thing gets to the final collection center and it changes. And let's be clear, we're not doing this thing to favor a political party. APC can be a victim of not, not, not transmitting results ele electronically. Why people can be a victim? So I wonder why some people think that because they are in power today, then it favors them for us to manually continue to transmit our results. Okay, Mr. So Ochoa. What, what they did in those states was to take a picture of that form. Okay. For the purpose of evidence. But that evidence is still not tenable in court because the Electoral Act does not recognize it. Okay, so Mr. Ochubere, we have a situation now where these modifications were seen, saying that online elections, um, you know, voting should not be transmitted electronically. So do you, mm. do you then think that um, it's, it's likely for people to now vote online and that will be declared unfit for use after the elections? And if that's done, I mean, what's the way forward? Uh, you see, for me, I, I, I just think it is a big uh, problem because the infrastructure to enable people vote online, I don't know if INEC has that kind of infrastructure built at the moment because even in the U.S., people don't, people don't vote online. <laughs> you have to either mail in ballot or you go to a polling unit uh, and vote. The only country at the moment that we've seen that people can vote on is Estonia, a very small country, and they are a highly tech-developed uh, tech country. So if you, look, I think it is just a, a matter of trying to be smart, but not really smart, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, what has happened is that uh, we, are, we are trying to self-preserve ourselves, and cut our necks at the same time. That's what the House is liberally uh, trying to do to, 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 to themselves. But Nigerians will not agree. All right. Um, we'll see how this plays out. Like you said, uh, you will, of course, be on your feet and ensure that uh, this doesn't get to be a center to. Um, and uh, we would continue to follow uh, through to see. Yes, where, yes, see where please, this please. We have, and I'm saying it. Uh, let, please show the president this statement. Uh, president Buhari, these people are trying to mess you up. We, are, we have a different agreement on this date, sir. Your Excellency, sir, you promised us when you signed the Not Too Young to Run bill that you are going to bequeath a good electoral legacy. And we agreed. The House is planning to do another thing that we, we did not agree, sir. Please, sir. Would, okay. it, would, it, would it be... Would it be um, important for you to actually hear the president make these statements, and you the know, president, not, and not just the president. Oh, 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 the president understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand that he did. Uh, there's, there's also the there's also a lot of things that were said um, in 2014 <laughs> before the elections. Also, a lot of things that were said in 2019 yes. before the elections. Also, so yeah, he, yeah. he did. But would it be important for you? But, but on this case, on this case, I am just saying that. What the president promised us, 
you know, I'm not referring to other things now. The other things that are troubling the country, there are a lot. We have, we have, on this one, the president is clear. I want to bequeath a good electoral legacy. And when he was signing the note to Young to Run B, he told us that he will ensure that it is done. So, sir, this is not the version that we want to see. Okay. So, All Mr. Right. Ochibori, um, the, the key issue here basically is about transparency. Fears that, you know, if the election results are not transmitted electronically, it will not be mm. a transparent, you know, election process. So, even with the current situation, how it stands, that, you know, they're saying you can vote electronically, but it cannot be transmitted yeah. electronically. How can we still ensure that the elections are free and fair? Well, you see, for us, the bedrock okay. upon which... Okay, seems we lost him again. We lost, exactly. We lost Mr. Chibur again. Um, if we can get him in for that final um, uh, conversation, we would, because we're really wrapping up here um, about what the elections should look like. You know, like we've been saying, the bone of contention is transparency, because why else would people be worried that the election results are not transmitted electronically? It's, it's for fear that, you know, maybe something might happen to it along the way. Like you mentioned, you're taking five or you're seeing five, you know, where you cast your vote, and it's 5,000 by, by the time they're announcing it. So it's an issue of electoral transparency. Can we really assure that even when the election results are not transmitted electronically? So he's waiting for the president to speak. Um, can we really expect the president to speak about this? You yeah, know, well, that's, that's another... Pretty much, pretty much same. Well, I don't expect that will happen. That's one. Um, not from the president, not from the, you know, spokespersons either. You know, and this is one of the reasons why, um, you know, for a long time we've always said, you know, it's great or it's important that we have a president that actually has conversations with the people, has okay. conversations with, with Nigerians, instead of, you know, just listen to spokespeople all the time. All right. So, Mr. Uh, Ochiburu, we have you. Let's get your final thoughts in about um, election transparency. So, so, so the thing is this. If, if, if the process, uh, from the legal perspective, and, 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 and from the point where we know that this is what is guiding the, the, the this, this is the framework guiding the, the execution of this uh, act, uh, we are, you are already going to be doubting what the outcome will be. What we are simply saying is election results, no suppose they rise like Gary now. It's simple. That's, that's just all. You, you, I can't vote in my Tama. And when it gets to INEC headquarters, it changes. It's not done. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not animals. We're, we're people who went to school. We're people who are practicing self-government, government of by and for the people. And and I just hope that everybody working together. And like I said, we are also going to give the speaker and the uh, and the Senate president the benefit of the doubt to say, oh no 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 no, we are not the ones that. That's not what we want to do too. Because at this moment. The final draft of what they want to pass that we've seen, it's not, it's not good for Nigeria and it's not good for our democratic uh, advancement and progress. So, All right. God bless you. Everybody uh, come to God bless you, Tuburi, the, you know, from the Coalition of Electoral Reforms. We would like to have another conversation with you as quickly as possible. And, of course, we will be following Thank this you. up to see how, where this leads us. Uh, but thanks for the work that you do and thanks for also taking our time to speak with Nigerians this morning. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Um, we're moving away from uh, the electoral conversation now to Ogun State, where yes. there seems to be chaos uh, brewing uh, between farmers and headers. Uh, of course, uh, we announced, uh, we spoke earlier about this, the anti-open grazing law, and of course, uh, the need to maintain peace and security across uh, states in Nigeria. So we'll talk about that next with an indigenous of that community, uh, and of course, uh, a representative of Makban. That comes up right after the short break.